tobacco. Baby with laser eyes. Lady with laser eyes. Exxon Mobil with laser eyes. These are the most evil businesses in the world, according to 24-year-old capitalist Jake Tran. Tobacco. Nestle. DuPont. Exxon Mobil. Google. TikTok. Discord. McDonald's. The Metaverse. It's certainly easy to find much evil in all these businesses. But are there businesses that are even more evil that YouTubers such as Jake Tran and Moon have missed? Let's consider two strong contenders. Boston Children's Hospital has been named the number one children's hospital by U.S. News & World Report for nine years in a row. Clearly, Boston Children's Hospital provided a lot of health care for children that has been great, helpful, and life-saving. But there's one particular category of services that Boston Children's Hospital proudly provides that has made it the center of an enormous amount of controversy. Let's take a look at this controversy and then provide some conclusions. On August 11, 2022, Libs of TikTok tweeted, Boston Children's Hospital is now offering gender-affirming hysterectomies for young girls. Gender-affirming hysterectomy is very similar to most hysterectomies that occur. A hysterectomy itself is the removal of the uterus, the cervix, which is the opening of the uterus, and the fallopian tubes, which are attached to the sides of the uterus. Some gender-affirming hysterectomies will also include the removal of the ovaries, but that's technically a separate procedure called a bilateral oophorectomy. And not every gender-affirming hysterectomy includes that, and people who are getting gender-affirming hysterectomies do not have to have their ovaries removed. After this tweet, Boston Children's Hospital experienced an enormous amount of backlash for being proud of performing life-changing transgender surgeries for young children. Then the supposed fact-checkers came in to supposedly expose the libs of TikTok for perpetuating misinformation. But now it's being dragged into this so-called culture war largely because of libs of TikTok, who posted a clip last week from this video originally made by the hospital. With, and this is one of the key things here, libs of TikTok framing this video as Boston Children's Hospital now offering gender-affirming hysterectomies for young girls, or seeming to imply to her more than one million followers that it performs the irreversible surgery on minors. But, and this is the other key thing here, not true. As places like PolitiFactor anyone that took an additional two seconds could tell you, patients who qualify must be 18 years or older and have a letter from a medical doctor stating that they have persistent, well-documented gender dysphoria. Like, that is literally on the hospital's website. And the thing is, I don't fault the people that are being misled by libs of TikTok. Like, the, the, it's in the name, Boston Children's Hospital, you're like, of course, they're talking about people that are under 18. But the moment you take a little extra time, you're like, oh, no, these people are just misleading others. Except... The statement that Boston Children's Hospital only performed these surgeries on individuals 18 years or older was added after Libs of TikTok posted that tweet in response to the backlash. Boston Children's updated their website this week to try to have us believe that they don't perform gender-affirming surgeries on minors. Luckily everything was archived. Still waiting for a correction from at Polifact. The most reasonable explanation is that Boston Children's Hospital changed its policies after receiving so much backlash. So, rather than spreading misinformation, it seems that the result of Libs of TikTok posting that tweet was an appropriate response from Boston Children's Hospital. If you like this video, subscribe to help spread the truth. At the same time, it really does seem that Boston Children's Hospital is fully on board with the unbelievable idea that young children are capable of grasping the concept of gender identity and identifying as the opposite gender. A child will often know that they are transgender from the moment that they have any ability to express themselves, and parents will often tell us this. We have parents who tell us that their kids, they knew from the minute they were born practically, and actions like refusing to get a haircut or standing to urinate, trying to stand to urinate, refusing to stand to urinate, trying on siblings' clothing, playing with the quote opposite gender toys, things like that. There is more and more a group of adolescents that we are seeing that really are coming to the realization that they might be trans or gender diverse a little bit later on in their life. So what we're seeing from them is that they always sort of knew something was maybe off and didn't have the understanding to know that they might be trans or have a different gender identity than the one they had been assigned. So that is a, a growing population that, they are, that we are seeing and that's being recognized as being trans and able to be treated. To be clear, they're saying that young children simply acting like young children can be signs that a child should be affirmed as the opposite gender. 
that's actually called completely failing in your duty as a parent to teach your children the truth about God creating people male and female. Are you so common and uneducated that you don't recognize that if you want to know whether a five-year-old is a boy or a girl, you don't check the plumbing, you ask a question. And if what they say contradicts the plumbing, you believe them and not your lying eyes. And in this video, Boston Children's Hospital is proud to provide top surgeries to girls as young as 15. Many surgical centers require you to be 18. At Boston Children's Hospital for top surgeries, we'll see people as young as age 15 if they've been affirmed in their gender for a long period of time and don't really have any other life complications that make surgery inappropriate. Certainly, it's evil for corporations to lie to, take advantage of, and harm customers and people. But it's even more evil for a children's hospital to promote life-changing ideologies and surgeries to children who are too young to grasp concepts like these. Of course, Boston Children's Hospital probably has great health care in other fields, but regarding this so-called gender-affirming care, Boston Children's Hospital is about as evil as it gets. As evil as gender-affirming surgeries are, there's one other business that could be considered equally evil, if not even more so. And that's the business of the prosperity gospel, which teaches people, especially poor and desperate people, that if you give money, God will give you even more back materially. Whatever you give yourself to, it will give itself back to you. If you practice well, you'll play well. If you give to it, it will give back to you. And so he said, when you give, you get a receipt in heaven that when you have a need, you can then go with your receipt and say, you see, God, I have got my receipt from my sowing, and now I have a need, and I'm cashing in my receipt. Make the vow now, and then obey the Lord and sow that seed, and watch what God will do with you. This has enriched countless prosperity preachers. Now you drive a wonderful car and you have a plane. And they send in money to these multi-millionaire preachers who fly in private jets and who live in multi-million dollar homes. Jesse Duplantis, for example, lives in a 35,000 square foot parsonage. It goes on to list how Benny Hinn saves his ministry money, giving up private jets and $10,000 a night luxury hotels to better spread the gospel around the world. And even though Joel Osteen doesn't take a salary from his church, he teaches this exact thing and profits from books that teach these concepts. I love that scripture. It says, when you help those in need, you are lending to the Lord and he will repay you. God knows how to repay you. Nobody can pay you like God can pay you. And the victims are the poor and desperate who give everything to these ministries, hoping for a miracle that God simply does not promise. Days after the event, and Ashneel still wasn't healed. It didn't happen. I was not even discouraged. I, I know it's God's plan. You know, I can stake my life on Pastor Benny Hinn's words. And God spoke to me last night at the, at the Colosseum Center where the crusade was going on, and he said, donate him another $2,000, and which I'm going to do it. Prosperity preachers distort the true, saving gospel of Jesus Christ to enrich themselves doesn't get much more evil than that. And there are people at home, they are poor, they are sick, they are desperate, they have sick children, and so in desperation, they get out their checkbook, or they get out their credit card, and they send in money to these multi-millionaire preachers.